Take a look at that sky out to the west. That's definitely rain coming. That means we don't have a lot of time. Well, it's that time of year again. Only comes once, every March and April. We're gonna get her done today. Hope you'll stick around. <laughs> Geez, I got lucky. You know, when I took this loader off the tractor before winter to put the blower on, as I was walking away that day, I remember thinking, don't I usually tarp this thing? And I was like, nah, my neighbor guy doesn't tarp his. Now I remembered why. Luckily it warmed up enough I got this block of ice out of the bucket. There are only two negative things I can say about a front mount blower. One, super expensive. In fact, probably the most expensive snow removal equipment you'll buy for your tractor. But two, you lose access to your loader arms. We're pretty fortunate this week, but if this had been a few days ago, I would have had a hell of a hard time trying to get those loader arms out of that big snow bank that melted in the last few days. I got to get it off today because I've got a big piece of equipment sitting in the back of the pickup, so I don't have a choice. Fortunately, the weather turned positive. And hey, given the choice again, I would absolutely buy the front mount, hands down. Mile long driveway, <laughs> I did not want to be looking backwards. In all fairness over the years, there's been very, very few times I've ever needed my loader in the middle of the winter. I mean, it'd be nice sometimes if I had the loader and the grapple. The odd time we've got trees down as opposed to having to move it by hand. But generally speaking, I'm okay with it. It'd be nice to have the loader arms, but unfortunately the subframe on these blowers cannot be left on. Because it'd be a whole lot easier just to unplug your hoses, back off of the blower, put your loader arms on, use them, and then put the blower back. But you have to take the whole thing off. <laughs> My chains? I'm going to leave them on for now. We're about to enter the muddy season. They come in pretty handy, at least for the next few weeks or a month, until things start to dry out a bit. <laughs> little fun fact for you. I think this is, in fact, I know, this is the first winter I never had to use my broadcast spreader. I never had to sand those hills once. Hmm. I'm gonna drop that blower out here. Jeez, that is pretty filthy. We'll have to leave that for cleaning another day when we get a little warmer and sunnier weather. <laughs> it's already getting muddy out here. Let me grab some gloves. Hey, so I know that uh, this is probably the first time for a lot of you that have just bought your tractor last fall or late last summer. First winter that you've used a front mount blower. So I'll try to talk as I go through this disconnect. It's super simple. It probably you found it a little awkward the first time you put it on in the fall, but that's it's like anything you do one, once or twice. It's a little awkward at first till you get the hang of it, but you adapt very quickly. And this thing, if I wasn't filming, I could get this all off and probably without exaggeration, less than five minutes. It's super quick and super simple, but let's get at it. Start with, I was just watching somebody else's YouTube channel about a week or two ago, and I can't remember whose channel it was, but he had his, his deflector hoses running down, but he didn't have them tied up or uh, wire wrapped. And you may have seen that channel or that video, but it was rubbing on his front tire and rubbed right through the sheath as well as through the rubber on the hose and went right down to bare steel so we had to replace the hoses. You'll see here whenever I run my hoses I route them the same way as the hydraulic hoses for the lift and I go right under and you'll notice I'm very generous with my tie wraps because I want to make sure it's going to last through the winter without coming up and you'll see there I route them the same way as I do the other hoses I bring them up and I even wire wrap them to the loader, um, the loader frame, and then I lock them in. I've never once had them come undone because I always put a lot of wire wraps all the way through and under. I don't leave them to run across here. So my first step is always just to get rid of these wire wraps because I want to take these hoses off before I do anything else. <laughs> yep, very generous with the wire wraps. Now that they're loose, I'm gonna remove the hoses I don't need. That's for the chute deflector 
as well as for the chute directional. I'm going to leave the lift cylinders on because you're going to need that to drop it down to the ground and to back out of it. <laughs> and hey, it's in your manual, so you probably read it. And like me, you probably missed it the first few times. Before you ever remove hydraulic hoses from a coupler, you always want to relieve the pressure in the system. Otherwise, you're removing that hose under pressure. And if you try to push it back together again, you're going to have a difficult time. And in fact, in the early days, I used to have to take the wrenches out and undo the couplers to release the pressure. Here's how you do it. Key to the accessory position. Not on, just accessory. In my case, I use my third function valve. So I'm cycling the buttons to relieve the pressure. And because I'm gonna be removing the chute directional, those are tied up to my two of my regular hoses. So I'm gonna to have to cycle the joystick. Remember, the blower's gonna to drop to the ground when I do this. So you gotta make sure you've got nothing under there. Put it into float. And I just cycle it and that relieves the pressure. Now we can remove them. I'll clean them up really nice, put the caps back on them. Until next year. And we'll remember, we're not removing the lift cylinder connections because we're gonna need that to get the blower onto the pallet. If I remember correctly, yeah. So these two for the directional are actually where you have those four hose connections. There's the two middle ones. Those are the ones you're gonna remove. And then I'm just gonna feed it or route it back through and get them out of there. So we're about ready. You're going to disengage your four-way connect. And just a little tidbit, the angle of this connection and the blower are designed such that the blower is sitting on the ground. If you're like me and you like to put them on pallets, you may find that when you go to try to disengage this and take it off, it might be a little difficult or you may have to lift the blower up so you can get these hinges out because it doesn't expect such a steep angle. I'm going to make sure I've got it down on the pallet. Two important things. There's a silver pin like this, one on either side. You're going to want to pull this and disengage these pins. And you want to make sure that the blower is in on the pallet far enough that your standing leg touches a piece of wood because that's what it's going to rest on in part. I'm not sure if you folks may have the same problem I have, but since the day I got this blower, one of these pins goes in nice and easy, lines up perfectly. The one on the right side never does and that one over there always needs a little help. When you pull it out, this pin on the side needs to go in that groove above so it holds it out of the hole. Pull it out, turn to the right, and you'll see the pin locked into that groove. Okay, fingers crossed. Yep, never comes out. Always needs a little bit of love. There we go. Now it's out. Good. Nice. Boy, some days you just get lucky. I think that's a first. All righty. Accessory position. Cycle that joystick. Take your last two hoses off. Alrighty, tractor's off, brake is on. You wanna disconnect this drive line. You always start from your mid PTO forward because remember the end of the shaft there is the one that's got all the tolerance. Grab your slip ring, pull your shaft out and then draw it back towards you and you're out. You're gonna remove those two stainless steel pins, one from the back, one from the front. In order to remove that locking pin in the back, you're going to need to turn your wheels to the left.
when you pull that rear pin out, you're going to have some pressure on this pin. Just press down on the front, she slides out nice and easy, and now she's ready to come off the tractor. You'll see I already had a second pallet for these other accessories, for the subframe, etc. You're just going to lift this up and pull it off. Myself, I just drag it. Good. And that's it. I always use two pallets, or usually two pallets. I'm going to leave them out here now for the next few weeks or a month until we get a really beautiful day and I'll get a bucket of water and some soap, scrub these things down, clean them up real nice, lubricate grease, get them put away, and I'll probably throw a little bit of crown rust proofing on the blower and possibly on the subframe just to keep it for the summer. And hey, I know it seemed like it took a long time because I had to film everything for you, but honest, after you've done it once or twice, it is honest to goodness, it's a five, 10 minute process tops, either putting it on and connecting it or disconnecting it and taking it off. I'd say Kubota did a really good job on the quick connect. The nuts are welded in on the back. See that? Sorry, I'll try to show you. That's why I was saying you can't torque the nuts. They're welded in back there. Welded, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Welded to the frame, so although I know you're supposed to torque nuts, not bolts, you only torque the bolts. I hope that was clear for you guys. Sorry if it wasn't.